Hey there, Son of Peace, Henry here. We're going to do a Sano Quickie today on the pancreas. So just some basic anatomy or Sano anatomy of the pancreas. Now, a lot of people always have trouble with the pancreas. Uh, us sonographers, when we find the pancreas, we tend to take a lot of images of it because it's not always easy to see. So we do appreciate it when we see it. Obviously, having a slender patient is good. Uh, fasting, no uh, food for at least eight hours. So there's no gas in the area. But you know, there's a lot of tricks. You can go up to the xiphoid process and angle down to try to avoid the, the gases from the transverse colon. Um, sometimes you can have, if the patient's allowed to drink, have them drink two to three cups of water and really fill up their stomach and use the stomach as a water bath. And those often allow for very, very good images of the pancreas. Here's an example of a stomach filled with fluid. Yeah, of course, this isn't a baby, but you can see this patient had pyloric stenosis, so they have an obstruction that's causing their stomach to just maintain a lot of liquid. But you can see the pancreas here, on any proxis, head, body, and then the tail. All right, so this is reproducible. I've done this on adults. Uh, anybody who has a stomach, you can do this, okay? Uh, you could also try p putting the patient on right lateral and left lateral decubitus to make sure that, or to try to at least make the air go away from the pancreas. Right lateral decubitus sometimes helps because air rises and if there's air in the stomach, it's going to rise towards the left. And at least you'll be able to see uh, the pancreas in the epigastric region. So to begin, we're here in the epigastric region. Now I'm transverse on the epigastric region and to the left a little bit and then angling towards, towards the spine medially. So right up front here, we have the rectus abdominis muscles and then in between will be the linea alba. We have the left lobe of the liver, and you can see the left lobe of the liver, but not the right because I'm in the epigastric region and I'm also oblique because the pancreas is not a perfectly horizontal organ. You're going to have the oblique sometimes uh, several degrees either way to get a good, complete view of the pancreas. So here's the pancreas here. You got the uncinate process right here, head, body, and then the tail. The tail is sometimes the hardest part to get. Uh, this might not be the, the entire tail. Keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes the tail looks like it's done here, but it'll turn and go this way more because the tail of the pancre pancreas ends at the spleen or at the splenic hilum. Don't think that just because you have this nice image that you have the entire pancreas or entire pancreatic tail. So here's a splenic vein. Okay, you can see that the splenic vein is going and then turning this way and going towards the splenic hilum. So just keep that in mind that the pancreas might do the same thing. All right, so in the head of the pancreas, you usually have posterior lateral, the common bile duct. Not always seen, but it's always nice to see it. It's a good place. If there's any uh, common bile duct dilation at the porta hepatis and you don't see any stones there, sometimes you could check in the head of the pancreas. And I've seen stones right here before. It's a very nice picture to get. And, you know, it's good to show that there's cholodogolithiasis there. And then anteromedial, you'll have the gastroduodenal artery, which is not imaged here. So you have those two little circles in the head of the pancreas. Keep that in mind. Oftentimes around here will be the pancreatic duct. The main pan pancreatic duct, not seen here. Uh, normally, a millimeter or less. I think some people might use two millimeters as their upper, upper limits of normal. So I'll show you a dilated one real quick. So here's a dilated pancreatic duct. With That's a calcification because this is chronic pancreatitis, so not a stone. But that's the pancreatic duct there, dilated. So continuing on, we have the SMA here, aorta. Always important to know that the IVC is here, that the... Left renal vein goes in between the SMA and aorta. Good view if you're looking, trying to rule out nutcracker syndrome, which I did a video on recently. You got the aorta here. And then the vertebrae, probably L1 to L2. Usually the head of the pancreas is by uh, L2. And here's a diagram with all the labeling and everything. So again, rectus abdominis bilaterally, the linea alba, left lobe of the liver, stomach, duodenum, or at least a duodenal pleural junction, pancreas. Splenic vein, going all out to the spleen. IVC with a left renal vein. Left kidney is probably around here, not very clearly seen, so I can label it, but it's probably around here. Aorta, right renal artery. Always good to know the right renal artery goes posterior to the IVC too in normal cases. And then the, the vertebrae. So in slender patients, smaller patients, or patients that just have uh, good scanning windows, you can also use the spleen as a window to look at the tail of the pancreas. So here's the spleen right here. Tail of the pancreas, splenic vein. When you put color doppler here, you can see usually the splenic vein and the splenic artery. As you can see here, splenic vein, splenic artery going towards the splenic hilum and the pancreas here. And then you got the stomach here with shadowing. And here's the same view with the labeling. So you got your spleen, pancreas, splenic vein, splenic artery would be there. 
and in the stomach. One of the reasons I like getting the pancreatic tail at the splenic hilum is you can see if there's any lesions or cysts or pseudocysts for that matter. Here you got a case of pancreatitis, large pancreatic tail, which is usually 1.5 to 3.5 centimeters. You can see the, the tail here, the, the hilum, with the splenic vein, splenic uh, artery, and a little bit of inflammatory changes there. And this is a transverse view. The other one was a sagittal view. Here's another view. I'm using the linear 9L for the GE machine. Again, this is a slender patient, so I can, you know, get away with using the linear. On larger patients or obese patients, you won't be able to use it for this matter. But you can see this, the pancreatic duct very clear there. Splenic vein again, which is the portal splenic confluence. So splenic vein goes up, goes up into the portal vein, and then into the liver. Below this, you have, if you, if you're hearing you angle below, you have the SMV. So you have the SMV, SMA, aorta, and then IVC, which is over here. You have those four vessels, which is good for ruling out uh, mid-gut malrotation. So again, body of the pancreas here, and then the tail, left lobe of the liver, rectus abdominis, rectus abdominis. All right, so that pretty much does it. Here's another, here's just a great anatomies diagram. There you can see the, the pancreas, and then the duodenum, which you were seeing in that first image. And then the duodenum has a C loop. And you see how the tail of the pancreas is over there by the spleen. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to be putting those images on Instagram, and uh, there'll be higher quality images there. You can feel free to screenshot them from there, all right? I'm also working on the eye ultrasound or the ocular ultrasound. Still have uh, a lot of things to add to it um, to do a you know pretty comprehensive overview. All right, so thanks for watching, and happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate, okay? Bye.